In this video, I will be creating a floral painting in Impressionist style. My materials will be watercolor and soft pastels. If you watch the videos on my channel, you will know that I love the style of Impressionists and I have several replicas of Renoir's paintings that I created with gouache to study his approach and his paint application, his color palette. I even created a class where I explain the principles of Impressionism and I show how to apply them to our own paintings. In all these videos, the material is gouache and because I love the style and because I love loose watercolor with minimum amount of details, I want to apply the same approach to watercolor. My inspiration will be Claude Monet's paintings, mostly the ones he painted in his garden in Giverny. The subject will be similar. I will be painting a flowering meadow, pretty complex subject. If you watch the video, you can tell me if you think my attempt was successful or maybe not. I will be painting on 300 pound, 100% cotton cold press watercolor paper. It's so thick I don't have to pin or tape it. And I'm going to start wet on wet. So I'm giving my sheet of paper a wash of clean water with a big soft brush. I want the initial watercolor wash to be very loose and flowing. I will not attempt to paint any detail to save any white space because, like I said, the subject is fairly complex. It's uh, this field of flowers, so it would be extremely difficult to paint around all those tiny flowers. So negative painting is not the technique to use here. I am using a fairly limited palette. You see all the colors on the screen. And I will start with my free flowing wash. Start adding some yellow to create sunshine in my painting. And then I will be dropping some other colors, a couple of greens. And I will also need some blue, in this case, phthalo blue, to push some of the areas of my painting back and create the shadows between all those stems of grasses and flowers. The reason I'm not attempting negative painting around all the small flowers, but painting the flowers first and then painting the leaves and the grasses around them, because I already tried that one time. The bouquet of white flowers in a jar is one of my favorite paintings but it was nearly a disaster fortunately i was able to save it with some white gouache you can check out this video if you're interested what happened so learning from the experience i'm going to start very loose and not paint any details I also want my wash to be kind of varied in tone because as you see the top and the bottom of the meadow in the reference photo are darker and the middle is lighter and I think that's a really cool effect so I will try to recreate that with my initial wash. I can also turn my paper upside down so it's easier for me to paint. It's easier to paint from top to bottom and it also allows watercolor to run and mix and create those beautiful transitions and beautiful texture because I'm working fairly large watercolor texture is important for me. I want to show it to the most advantage and it's impossible to create a lot of these effects with a brush. You need to let watercolor run and mix on its own. I also like splattering watercolor when it falls onto the wash that's already on paper, pushes away the pigment and you create even more color variation and, and more texture. I'm kind of starting to hint at some grasses with my initial wash but it's very very abstract i just want an interesting abstract painting and if you look at impressionist paintings they were the pioneers kind of the forerunners of abstract painting right because they eliminated a lot of details the painting have to be viewed from a distance to see what's actually painted especially claude monet's paintings so my goal is to use the same approach, but paint with watercolors and not oils. My first wash is pretty much ready. I'm going to lay down my board horizontally to stop paint from moving. I can maybe add just a few more grasses with a fine tip brush. This is a Asian art brush. They sometimes also called calligraphy brushes. 
so I can feather out my brush strokes very easily with them and kind of hint a little better at those um, grasses. Paint runs and mixes anyways, but that gives me a little bit of that stripy kind of texture that looks like grasses. The middle of the painting is a little too saturated. I want it to be lighter, as I mentioned in the beginning. So I'm going to lift some of the paint with soft flat brush. And now it's time to let this first layer dry. As you know, watercolor lightens considerably, at least two shades after it dries. And no matter how much pigment we use, you see I'm painting straight out of my wells, basically applying pure pigment to paper, but I still do not get the saturation that I want. I want my background to be sufficiently dark for those light irises and other flowers to stand out against it. So I need to apply a second layer of color. I'm using a flat brush so that I will pick up a lot more paint than water. And this time I will still paint abstractly, but I want to first of all darken just the bottom of my painting and create more details, a little bit more. So flat brush is really handy for painting leaves and grasses because you just leave an imprint and it looks like a branch or a stem. And I am going to texture even more and darken the bottom portion of my painting. And also I will do a little bit more on the top, but I want to leave the middle very light. good way to create the dappled shadow on the grasses and leaves is to sprinkle some color and then spritz it with water from your spray bottle. Just need to use a very fine mist that makes the color run and that way those um, shadows look very natural, much more natural than we can paint them with a brush. So let's find a few shadows on top. Very important not to overdo it and not to cover the whole sheet with those darker colors. I know it's hard to stop, but we need to look at the reference photo. And since we're using it for inspiration, it's also our guidance as to how much to do. My background wash is very cool. So I want to warm it up with some permanent orange and I'm doing the same thing. I'm splattering it and then softening those splatters with a little spritz of clean water. Painting is starting to take shape a little bit. There are still no details, but it starts to look a little bit like a meadow. Very important to have freedom of movement with your brush. So you see I'm holding it in the middle or even at the very end. I'm not clutching the brush. I'm standing so my arm can move freely. And that really helps me to create those kind of expressive, decisive, almost calligraphic strokes. So if you hunch over your painting and you clench your muscles, your brush strokes will look very restricted as well. This is my second layer. It's now dry. I think we did sufficiently with watercolor here and let's move on to soft pastels. Here's my antique set of soft pastels and I will pick various shades of blue, purple, some pinks to paint the flowers. I'm going to start with irises. They're in the foreground and they're the largest ones there, even though they're pretty small anyways. And I will be using various shades of blue to paint those irises. I think best tool to smudge the pastel and kind of blend it with watercolor. I don't want it to sit on top and look very different. I want it to blend. I'm using a bunch of Q-tips to smudge the pastels and actually make it adhere better to my watercolor paper as well at the same time. This is pretty labor intensive stage of my painting because I will work with a line tool with fine point. It um, takes a little bit longer 
to paint with pastels than with watercolor but i will go through all the painting and find all the irises maybe even paint a few more than i see in the reference photo it's just our inspiration we don't have to copy it and so what i'm trying to do is distribute those irises nicely distribute all the flowers all over my painting have a balanced composition and also blend them really well with watercolors so they look like organic part of this painting if you find some Claude Monet's paintings online, you'll see this is kind of his approach. He liked to paint just masses of flower, those flower beds that he had in Giverny. And if you look at those paintings close up, it's just a bunch of color daubs. But if you look at them from a distance, you can see that that's actually flowers. And so he added just enough detail to give us that information. But he didn't paint every single flower separately in those um, in his landscapes Flowers do need stems, so I'm using some green pastels to hint at those stems. I don't want to detail them too much, but I don't want them to hang up in the air either, so I'm connecting them to the lower portion of my painting. And I also can find some lighter grasses using pale yellow, pale green to create that texture and paint the grasses that made this reference photo so attractive uh, to me. And made me choose to paint from it. I was uh, hesitant to use white, but it actually looks really good because there is a sprinkle of really tiny white flowers in the reference and I think they really bring this painting to life. So I'm going to use white pastel for highlights. Let's do something on top. There are some pale pink flowers there as well. Give them a little highlight with white. Very important to still have a focal point in an abstract painting like this. You see, I gave a little more detail to those irises in the kind of lower right of my painting. And the rest of the flowers are less developed and less detailed. So the same rules apply to an abstract painting as to, let's say, hyper-realistic painting. We need a focal point where the viewer's eye will go first where there will be most detail and most interest and the rest of the painting needs to support that focal point. same thing happened to my painting as happened when I was painting with watercolors. It looks too cool so I'm going to use orange pastel to warm it up and add some of those orange flowers. We actually see them in the reference photo. So let's add those with very saturated orange. Soften them with my q-tip as well. Get rid of the texture so they blend with watercolor better and look as part of the painting and not just sitting on top of the paper. A good way to decide if your painting is done or not is to look at it in a frame. I'm using a white mat that I took out of the frame. For some reason, when we laminate those irregular borders, the painting, first of all, <laughs> looks a lot better and we also can see if it's finished or not. I think mine is finished. I'm going to use a fixative that's meant for water media to seal it because I don't want those pastels to lift and smudge. 
if I rub it, they will still transfer a little bit, but it's a lot more stable now that I sealed it than if I left it without the varnish. So here is what the finished painting looks like. Let me know in comments what you think about the final result. Would you call it an impressionist approach to watercolor? Thank you so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one here on Time Wrap Studios channel. Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!